My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. I'm people make friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, explain all that's going on. So call me, 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me, Jim Kramer. The non-believers, they've had the microphone. They'll never stop hating this market, will they? And days like today, with the Dow slipping 98 points, this would be dipping 0.112, and the Nasdaq declining 0.41%. Well, all it does is encourage them. Look, we are due for a pullback. I've been saying that. We have a very high cash position from our charitable trust. Members of the CMC Investing Club know all too well, particularly from our annual meeting. But we like this market the whole way up. Many of the critics hated it the whole way up. First, they hated it because we were in some sort of pandemic-inspired inflationary cycle. Then they hated it because of the mini banking crisis that started this time last year. Oh, they hated it because the Fed was ruthlessly raising rates and they saw the economy headed for a hard landing. They hated it because, oh, so much of the market strength was concentrated in the Magnificent Seven. And now they hate it because of what they call the AI bubble. All along, they failed to celebrate the market's incredible victories. They ignored the end of high inflation. They ignored what sure feels like the end of the Fed's tightening cycle. Not only was there no hard landing, you could argue the plane never really had the land because of all that job growth that's been so strong. And they didn't even care when the Magnificent Seven started bifurcating and passed the leadership baton to the industrials and the broadening rally of small and mid-cap stocks, which are still cheap after making yearly high last week. So I gotta wonder, what the heck's wrong with these people? Why can't they never admit that the market deserved a rally, even if it might go down now? Everything that happened so far has made a lot of sense to us, and I think the AI move we're seeing is actually perfectly logical in the context of worldwide tech growth. First, though, let's just focus on the fact that it's an election year. The Supreme Court just certified that former President Trump will get the Republican nomination in a walk. That removes a lot of uncertainty about this election. Oh, sure, there are other prosecutions. But we have an overwhelmingly conservative Supreme Court, and I bet they can kick the can down the road on anything that might interfere with the election. That matters to the market because, like him or hate him, Trump's arguably the most pro-business pro-stock market president in history. Hey, he uses Dow Jones Industrial Average as his approval rating. President Biden is much less friendly to big business, to put it mildly, frankly. But in fairness, the political agenda of throwing trillions of dollars in infrastructure has been a major boon to a huge number of companies, especially our beleaguered industrials that are so terrific. With that out of the way, let's deal with the so-called bubbles head on. Now, the first and the obvious bubble they never seem to talk about the haters is, is not in the stock market at all, it's crypto which has no real underpinnings when it comes to its actual worth. However, its relative worth versus the U.S. dollar is palpable. People view crypto as a hedge against potential inflation blown on by sky-high national debt. But when we actually had high inflation, crypto performed horribly. Doesn't matter. People still think it's a hedge against inevitable inflation from the government. And we've gotten to the point where there are exchange-traded products for Bitcoin, and there'll be some for Ethereum as well. And the hedgers are out in full force. It makes sense. Meanwhile, it feels like there are no Bitcoin sellers. That's what's bubblicious about it, even up here. So I can see crypto continuing to rally. Just remember to jump ship if inflation really does spike. Hey, by the way, the bump up in gold confirms the bull in and pull out of crypto. See, crypto is moving every speculative asset that's a hedge because gold above 2,000 is speculative. Next, how about the non-bubble, though, in artificial intelligence? Let me start by saying that sure, there are some stocks in the AI cohort that are overinflated, but that doesn't mean they can't go higher. See, I didn't really like that the super micro got added to the S&P 500s. That one's just blowing through levels at a pace. Makes you think it's, it's stealing something really highly proprietary, and that's not the case. Super micro can and does have competitors. But let me tackle NVIDIA, up huge today. Now, it's the third largest company in the world with a valuation worth of $2 trillion. For a very long time, I've told you to own NVIDIA, don't trade it. I actually get called out in the street now a lot about it, which is really terrific. I like that. And I named my dog NVIDIA when the stock was about a tenth of where it is now. Uh, why not trade it? Well, simple. The valuation is too low. And don't just look at today's price earnings multiple. That doesn't help you. I want you to think of it like this. Wall Street expects NVIDIA to earn $24 per share this year. I think that's a low bull number, but let's use it. Well, that number, the stock does look a little pricey, selling for roughly 35 times this year's earnings estimates. But now let's go back a year ago. A year ago this week, at that point, NVIDIA, the stock, traded at $238. And there were many people who hated it and thought it was incredibly overvalued. But it was only overvalued because the earnings estimates turned out to be way too low. Do you know what it turns out to be? It's only selling for 10 times the current estimates for this year. That's right, when it was at 238, 10 times. We just didn't know they'd give us so many upside surprises. Now go to October. 
the stock stood a little more than $400 per share in retrospect. It was still selling for less than the average name in the S&P 500 when you look at 2024 estimates. Over and over again, it turns out NVIDIA has been selling at absurd levels. Crazy. Absolutely, absolutely low. So if NVIDIA keeps trouncing the estimates, then I bet it ends up looking cheap once again. Now, isn't that the opposite of a bubble? Okay, now let's take Jensen Wong at, at, at his word, right? I mean, don't you think he deserves his word? Thinks the, he thinks the entire digital world is going to be turned upside down by generative AI, not just servers, not just the data centers, not just the PCs, not just the factories, not just the autos. I mean everything. This is what's really going on. We don't even know how big AI is going to be. We get bits and pieces from a Meta or an Amazon or a Microsoft or an Alphabet. We know that last week Dell talked at length about what can happen when you get all the NVIDIA high-end H100 chips you need. We'll know that Broadcom is going to address it on Thursday. AMD, a genuine rival of NVIDIA, will be talking to it at HP conference. These are all tremendous companies benefiting from the commitment to AI. It is undisputed that NVIDIA is the king of AI, and it's undisputed that this company has repeatedly surprised the upside. So let me ask them, how the heck are we supposed to value it other than against the estimates. And what do the bears keep? What do they have? What is their edge? The third alleged bubble, 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 these GLP-1 weight loss drugs from Novo Nordisk can you look. We have a worldwide epidemic of obesity. Just last week, the authoritative British medical journal Lancet raised its estimates for the number of obese people on the planet from 897 million to 1 billion. Diabetes is an epic, uh, epidemic proportions. Fortunately, we have reasons to believe these GLP-1 drugs lower hypertension and help with fatty liver disease on top of treating diabetes and making you lose weight. I think these are the most important new class of medicines since maybe antibiotics. How are we supposed to value them? I'd be, it would be insane for you like, to have a cheap stock here. But the bears want us to make it cheap. We can't. Now, what's typically the case is that we do get a sell-off. I'm ready for it. We aren't all that overbought. The trusty oscillator says that. We aren't in bond trouble. We do have a labor report on Friday, and I'm still expecting a strong set of numbers, which is not what Wall Street wants to see. Strong job numbers could take a summer rate cut off the table and cause some serious concern that might lead to a sell-off. We see what's happening in Apple. That looks like it's rolling over. You know how I feel. Own it, don't trade it. I'm not fretting. I'm just expecting. And I have my shopping list of what to buy on weakness for the travel trust. You are never set for a big decline unless you are net short. We can't short stocks for the travel trust, but we have raised a lot of cash. And you can see that when you join the CMEC Investing Club. We make everything public before we do it. But the bottom line, I will be ready to buy if this market sells off. Not immediately. I'm not going to be like that. I don't take the first bite. But the haters, they'll be ready to show scorn. They'll say, I told you so. I say, thanks for nothing. You didn't tell us anything. Just raise some cash and be ready to do some buying if and when the market has its inevitable pullback after this incredible run from November of 2023. Ed in California. Ed. Hi, Jim. This is Ed from Wairika, California, and I've been Excellent. on your club from the very first day we could sign up, and I love it. And thank, thank you, you so much. We work, work our butts off. I really appreciate that. There's a man who knows how hard we're working. Uh, thank you, Ed. Thank you very much. What My question is, with this new drug that Lily has for diabetes, and as you know better than me, it curbs the appetite or desire for food and alcohol beverage. How's that going to affect Constellation brands? Okay. Short term, long term. Okay, it's a great question. Now, here's the uh, the fact is is that beer sales have not been hurt. It hurts the hard liquor, not as much beer. We don't know why it doesn't act as negatively on beer. We think it's just because beer is, tends to have a social component. That, uh, that hard liquor doesn't have. We're eyeing it, we're watching it, but it does not seem to have the impact that it has on what we call the browns and the clears. Let's go to Sandy in Arizona, please. Sandy. Professor Kramer, how are you? I'm doing well, Sandy. How about you? Fine. Uh, I was a little kid driving in my uncle's DeSoto. Boy, we're going back some. I saw this big Cadillac, and I said, gee, Uncle Joe, wow, that's a great car. And he turns to me and he says, those are for other people. Mr. Kramer, you are, through your wisdom and tutelage, for the rest of us, we're becoming those other people. And I thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Holy cow, these calls are making me feel good. Working so hard yesterday. This is great. Let me go to work for you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm a retired data security director worldwide. I opened up my platform this morning, and what I saw at Palo Alto Networks just made my blood run cold. Basically, Palo Alto is facing a gaggle of lawsuits. 
uh, there's a verdict of $152 million, and investors are suing them over a big share tumble. Three law firms are suing them over um, violations of security fraud and so forth. Is Mr. Nikesh not telling us something? No, no. These lawsuits are all, I'm going to say it point blank. I see these filed every day, anytime a stock falls. And I want to just say, someone, please, some judge, somebody stand up and say, look, we got rid of this when Al Shugart got this, changed the law years ago, worked so hard to make it so that at the beginning of a conference call, you, they don't, these people don't know what's going to happen, they have to just uh, say it. And yet these law firms never stop. It's a disgrace. It's a national disgrace what those law firms do. A disgrace. All right, I will be ready to buy if this market sells off. The haters, they'll be ready to show scorn and say, I told you so, I told you so. I say thanks for nothing. Man Money tonight, with crude prices seeing two straight months of, gain, of gains and natural gas seeing its fourth straight monthly loss, I'm getting the bottom of what's really happening in the energy sector with the CEO of Coterra. Then we're at the time of the year where I like to take a look at the top dividend boosters, the SP 500. Are there any fits for your portfolio? I'm highlighting the top 10. And Next Tracker was one of the best performing IPOs of 2023. So, what does this solar company have in store for this year? Do not miss my exclusive with the CEO. So, stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.